okay? So now we're going to talk about estrogen in women and children because it also plays a role in their hormones and how they're developing as well, too. Exactly. It's, it's, it's kind of the, the hidden hormone that not a lot of people think about because, oh, testosterone, progesterone, but estrogen also is a big factor. So, first of all, for females, there are three types of estrogen. Talk to us a little about the three types of estrogen and kind of how they benefit the female body. Yeah, exactly. Back in the 50s, they... Uh 50s and 60s, they came out with estrogen only for women, and it was supposed to be the panacea to help all women across the United States stay young, and they really marketed just estrogen. And of course, the Women's Health Initiative, Health Initiative study showed that too much estrogen could cause heart attacks and strokes. So there's always a lot of confusion out there. Physiologically, a woman has three estrogens in her body, okay. estradiol, estrone, and estriol. They all function differently. She has progesterone. Okay, she has testosterone, thyroid, cortisol. This whole metabolic concert needs to be looked at. You can't just give a woman estrogen and expect magic to happen. Physiologically, women have deficiencies in, in different hormonal levels as long as long as different, you know, as well as different nutritional deficiencies. So, you know, what's really interesting if you think about it is that 40,000 women on the average die from breast cancer every year. 500,000 women die from heart disease but you don't hear about 500, that. 500,000. 500,000. And then guess what this? The marketing game. Yeah, from, from my, uh, from my back time back in the day as a paramedic, the first sign is sudden death. So a lot of these women's heart issues are hormonally related. It's not about cholesterol anymore. Mm -hmm. So the women or the women's center or the cardiology group that jumps on you know, this women's program, they're going to be rock stars because women need this education. We took care of the guys yeah. with heart attacks, and then we sort of let the women fall by the wayside. Breast cancer, you can't go anywhere without seeing a pink ribbon, uh -huh. but 500,000 women are dying of heart disease, and it's hormonally related. Could be from estrogen dominance. Too high estrogen in the body can cause constrictions to certain arteries in your body. So people are starting to wake up. Women are starting to ask the tough questions. So, yeah, it's something to definitely look at. So, but, like, we'll talk about a little bit about symptoms now. Like, okay, so what kind of symptoms could you see for an estrogen dominant women you know obviously some weight gain issues we have a couple pictures of your ex-girlfriends here that were drawn out <laughs> and so we uh put those up for folks to take a look at but nonetheless give us a couple symptoms of estrogen dominant women where it might be out of balance well it's exactly estrogen estrogen dominance um the estrogen is elevated and and the progesterone levels are low and and weight gain at high estrogen causes cell proliferation it causes the inflammation response. It compromises the brain chemistry. When estrogen is in the proper balance when you're younger, the three estrogens are in balance. It enhances a woman's physiology. Mm -hmm. It enhances her skin. As a woman gets older and, and, the, and the very uh, protective estrogens switch over to a more dangerous estrogen called estrone, then the blood thickens up, the obesity comes on. Mm -hmm. You know, she starts to have painful sex. Uh, there's a lot of symptoms that happen. And I was in the women's hormonal market in 2006, and we took care of thousands of women and watching their bodies change and, and looking at their blood work. But a lot of doctors don't understand estrogen dominance. And also the toxins in the environment can also cause estrogen dominance. Okay. It's xenoestrogen. So any, any, any chemical that a woman's putting on her body, shampoo, toothpaste, you know, perfumes, pesticides around the house, believe it or not, are called hormonal disruptors. And it can elevate a woman's estrogen levels. And, and again, no, nobody's looking at that. Nope, those are big times too. Food is also huge too. You know, big time. Edamame, soy, that soy. plays a huge role. Exactly. So those are uh, things to look at, kind of get in balance. All right. Uh, we already went over some of this. Some of the causes, you know, food, environment, stress, genetics, stuff to look at that people aren't really looking at. Now, get like you said, baseline testing. Get baseline tested, and then kind of uh, you can go from there as you go on. Uh, let's just talk about. I had a kind of quick question because you see women female, different type, different body types. Sometimes you see those gals with the larger rear end, you know, and they'll work out, they'll go to the gym, everything else is skinny, but, you know, they might have the Kardashian butt going on, okay? Estrogen imbalance in their body? No, no, that's, that's great. Different shapes of different women, it's not about exercise, and this is really cool. Um, you know, what, what we can learn from that is the way the body fat is distributed mm -hmm. is hormonally related. It's okay. not about diet. Yeah. So where the body, you know, some women with upper, upper body, apple-shaped body fat, that could be from high insulin, simple carbohydrates, poor diet, lower body fat. Like, like when a woman is pregnant, she gains weight in her lower body to balance out the, the stomach and, and to, to get her ready for the delivery in the, in the pregnancy. It's, a, it's an evolutionary symptom that, that's been happening for a million years. So if a woman has lower body obesity, it's usually tied to hormonal levels. So if we want to help that woman lose weight, Hormones, are dis hormones cause distribution of body fat. 
even in men. So men with high estrogen will carry, will carry lower, lower uh, body fat, lower extremity body fat. Men with higher insulin levels will cause upper body fat, more the apple shape. Wow. So we know that hormones are involved. That's why we need to test them all. We need to look at all, all three of the estrogens, progesterone, testosterone. Okay, we need, to, we, we need to look at thyroid as well as cortisol levels. If we look at that system and then slide it over, then we could get a baseline for somebody to help them burn body fat, help them, help them lose weight. Wow. But, but consider that what you drink, the environmental toxins, as you age, can all elevate estrogen levels. Yeah. So people might say, oh, it's just genetics. But sure, it might be genetics, but you can change genetics exactly. by eating certain foods, you know, getting certain assistance and nutrients inside your body, right? Right, exactly. Well, I, this, is the, this is the rub about genetics. Genetics cocks the trigger. The epigenetics pulls it, which means I have a genetic susceptibility to diabetes. My father had diabetes, so I have a genetic susceptibility. The trigger is cocked. Now, if I didn't work out, if I didn't follow my diet, you know, I would probably end up with, you know, diabetes. But my epigenetics is what, what can I do behaviorally, diet-wise, that could actually change my genes. So the food I eat can turn on and off genes. A lot of people don't know that. What they're eating can turn on and off genes in their body. What they supplement with can turn on and off genes. So genetics doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. Genetics just cocks a trigger. Your behavior in the environment pulls it. Oh, no. Personal responsibility now. They can't have that excuse anymore. Uh-oh. What are we going to do? Boom. Okay, so progesterone, okay? What do we need to know about that? We've talked about estrogen, but also an important hormone in the human body, the female body, progesterone, okay? And that's kind of like the male's version of testosterone, okay? So what should we know about that in relevance to this? Well, physical, mental, and emotional stress all lower the hormone levels in a woman's body. And if a woman becomes estrogen dominant and we increase her progesterone levels, it's really interesting. Um, and we've done this with thousands of women when I worked for... Uh, uh, the, this training pharmacy. I also traveled to uh, Dr. Hotze's clinic. He has like 10,000 women on his program. Dr. Hotze, who wrote the book uh, Hormones, Health, and Happiness, he has a pharmacy on site. He has a large team. He, he has over 10,000 women on, women on his program, and he does this hormonal replacement therapy, you know, along with coaching and, and nutrition. He's got a great operation. I met him in 2006. So what he does is he balances out progesterone levels. He, he, he puts women on low-dose progesterone. Progesterone binds to the same receptor sites in the brain as Prozac and Xanax. So it's kind of cool. So if you've got a woman that's depressed, we know natural progesterone elevates, you know, her brain chemistry, elevates her metabolism, and naturally brings down um, uh, estrogen, helps balance out, balance out estrogen. So a woman starts losing progesterone in her 30s. Wow. So just getting women a little bit of progesterone in a cream form or educating her about pro progesterone, you know, can be life-saving. I mean, I traveled and met the best people on the planet. Susan Summers is a big uh, proponent of natural progesterone. It's in all her books. So this information is out there. Physiologically, progesterone is just one of the tools that my pharmacy can make for our clients to help get their body back into balance. And remember, anybody out there that's just treating hormones in isolation, they're doing you a disservice. You got to look at multiple systems of the body, mm -hmm. ask the tough questions, Understand you have three estrogens in your body, ladies, and, and, and understand what they do. And we have a hormone training program on the Russ Scala YouTube channel. Just check it out. It's, yes. it's 10 boring minutes. That's the next one. <laughs> 10 boring minutes of what to do next. I know, right? Okay, so we, uh, we got to do a lot of stuff right there of what they can do. Obviously, get tested. Don't just look at one. Progesterone is the female version of testosterone. So obviously, you don't want to just go and just start shooting up on progesterone. You want to get your levels tested with estrogen as well, too, and find a happy medium in order to get some treatment for that, right? Well, yeah, pretty, women have testosterone in their bodies, too, which is very, very, very important. Um, physiologically, you know, the, there's multiple hormones in play all the time. And, and, and study and stress, psychoneural immunology, the stress that we're under lowers all our hormone levels. Now, I'm not just talking about libido and muscle here. I'm talking about quality of life. These hormones sure. would be important for elevating brain chemistry. These hormones would be important to stop cognitive decline. For years, psychiatrists were just treating the head. They didn't understand how to treat the body and the head together. Well, now that's all changing. Physiologically, your intestinal tract is the second brain. Mm -hmm. You've got neurotransmitters in your intestinal tract. So now the intestinal tract, if that's out of balance, will affect how you feel. So uh, a, a, a psychiatrist that's just treating the head and writing prescriptions for Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft to help you, you know, get out of that depression, in reality, he should be looking at the intestinal tract, looking at all your hormone levels, because there... Herein lies the rub. This is what causes depression. It's different in everybody. It's not just about taking an SSRI. If, you, if you're going through depressive or, or, or you have a, a, a bad stretch in your life, divorce or whatever, physiologically you're going to go in the tank. 
and we can measure that now. Stress is a big thing too, so straighten your life up first. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. the easiest thing you can do. Well, yeah. it sounds easy, but it doesn't always. Okay, cool. So that's our little talk here on estrogen. Actually, we're actually going to get into um, childhood obesity. Okay, so we talked about estrogen in females, progesterone, what they can kind of do, and then now let's talk about estrogen in children because it's something that is having a huge impact on the kids today, but it's not something that people are really talking about or even looking at, okay? So, statistics, right, straight from the CDC website, okay? Over the past 30 years, childhood obesity has doubled in children and uh, quadrupled in adolescents. So that means if you're 6 to 11 years old, it's up uh, from 7% to 18%, and then from 12 to 19-year-olds, from 5% to 21%, which is actually ridiculous. And there's a great little fun little graphic of something like that. Um, and of course, in 2012, more than one third of children and adolescents were overweight. And we see it all today, you hear it all today. Gosh, when I was that kid's age, we were outside running around, we were skinny, there wasn't no childhood obesity. So what's happening? Obviously, we're going to look at the estrogen part of it. There's multiple factors, you know, like you talk about. But we're going to look into the estrogen part of things. Okay, so what are the factors of childhood obesity? All right, it's a cute little picture of your kid there, Russ. Obviously, diet has a big role in it. So let's just talk about diet in relation to uh, childhood obesity. Yeah, these, uh, this, is, this is sort of overwhelming when you think about it. These poor kids, um, I really want to really work with these kids, and I'm, and I'm going to have my coaches focus on, on a program. You know, how do you, uh, how do you get, how, how, does, uh, how does broccoli compete with, yeah. with that stuff? I mean, you know, or, 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 or a bunch Ooh. of Skittles and a Snicker bar. Uh-huh. So taste buds are trainable. Um, what a lot of families don't realize is, is that children, a half a slice of bread could shut off fat burning. A lot of these kids, the environmental toxins, are also elevating estrogen levels in children. Nobody's talking about that. And just a real quick story, I had a, a two corporate people that their child, I wrote a treatment protocol for their child, and uh, they went to the children's hospital to present it to the endocrinologist. Uh, the endocrinologist got offended. And well, all we did is put together all the research about elevated estrogen, low testosterone, aromatase inhibitors, what testing to do. Well, after he started flipping through it, he was very thankful. But you think about it. Here's a, a very savvy uh, uh, couple that has a kid that they can't understand why he's gaining weight. I put the research together. They take it into the, the Dalai Lama over here at this children's hospital, and he gets offended. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, really? I'm, I, I want to tell that guy, get ready, because all this is coming. You guys better wake up because people are going to come to the table smart and ask the tough questions because childhood obesity is not just about eating bad food, even though it's part of it. It's about understanding physiologically what's going on. Look at a kid's multiple metabolic markers. You know, these kids get bullied when they're heavy. There's a lot of bad things that happen. So, you know, plugging into treatment protocol, educating the family first, and then having them ask their doctors the tough questions. Doing different blood work is going to, is going to really help these kids out a lot. I, I think it's going to kick ass. Just like anything else, multiple metabolic markers that you've been talking about. Okay, but the role of estrogen. So let's just talk about in a child's body, what happens in regards to estrogen, since we're kind of talking about that. When they have poor diet, stress in their life, they get bullied, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, let me give you a scenario. We had one kid who had a child we tested. He had a elevated estrogen, and he had something, you ready for this? He had something elevated called 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's basically showing the DNA is getting a little... Um, getting a little damage done from, from, from the environment and also on a cellular level. So when you think about the pesticides and the fungicides around the house, you think about what this kid has taken a bath in, chemicals, you know, all the shampoos, everything he's brushing his teeth with, that all puts pressure. That, that's all a body burden. Everybody, you know, I'm not trying to sound like, you know, a conspiracy theorist here, but you know what I'm saying. The environment impacts a kid's hormonal levels. There's research out there on xenoestrogens. Google it xenoestrogens can cause imbalances in an obese children's hormonal level. So if, you, if estrogen is elevated, it shuts down the kid's testosterone. If his, if his testosterone is shut down, he's not going to burn any body fat while he's exercising. Yeah. He's going to have a hormonal imbalance. So by tweaking his diet, by thinking about the external environment, you know, what's going on in his current area, having him tweaking his diet. I think a lot of these kids have carbohydrate addictions. Those carbs right here elevate serotonin levels. I call them poor man's Prozac. Yeah. How do you get a kid that's under stress, that's heavy, how do you get him to quit eating that? It's almost like, you know, I've dealt with heroin addicts, methadone addicts, and I'm not saying it's at that level, but I believe, I believe that is an addictive component to kids, and that's how we've got to look at 
these children moving forward to help them lose weight. Starts at a young age, changing their and their diet, and exactly their, their patterns of health. But uh, just to back up a little bit, you said you could uh, look on a cellular level and you can see how their body is not detoxifying itself because it has those increased markers for cancer later on. Exactly. And I know because I did the testing too. Oh, yeah, that, you did. Uh, that was some of mine. I wasn't detoxing properly. And right. so, you know, a couple of uh, supplements and vitamins here to help that process and speed it up. But in a child, you know, you don't think about it. My kid, you know, 8 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, he's supposed to be healthy, right? His body should work properly. But in reality, it's not working properly. And then you can see when it's not working properly. Exactly. Um, you and I shot that video on the mitochondria. I mean, we look at what's happening on a cellular level. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a family, it's a training thing, man. Yeah. When you think about this, it's overwhelming. Can, you know, when you tell a family that your kid doesn't need three meals a day, that goes completely against everything they've learned. We shot the video on the mitochondria to show family members that carbohydrates don't burn as efficiently as fat does mm -hmm. on a cellular level. Now, that research is out there, and all of this is changing in real time. So, you know, the reason we shoot those is because we want to educate people and, and, and let them know that this is real science that we're putting in their hand. They're not going to hear this from their doctor. They're going to, this kid that's obese is going to get put on a restrictive calorie program. All that's going to do is make him miserable. Mm -hmm. He needs to eat fat mm -hmm. to lose fat. But, oh, you know, God, don't tell yeah, you, that. Can't, you can't talk about that, right? So we kind of mentioned it throughout the whole talk here, but, you know, what can a mother or a father do if their child is overweight or they think he's going down the wrong path, he or she? And what can they do to kind of institute some of those measures in place to get them on the right track? One of the things we do is, is listen, when they need a customized protocol, um, just restricting calories is not going to work. Fat is not bad. Uh, look and get in the proper blood work. We could help families get the proper blood work. Look at the intestinal tract because you are not what you eat. You already absorb. If the intestinal tract is out of balance in your child, he's not going to burn body fat as efficiently. So there are testing that we could do out there, and then, and then there's coaching that we could follow it up with to help the family, to help um, the child lose weight because here's what happens when a child's insulin level goes up he's going to store body fat so a half a slice of bread will shut off fat burning because of elevated insulin and here, here's what really scares me it's kind of sad the big three heart disease diabetes and cancer what do they all have in common elevated insulin and obesity elevated insulin and obesity so you drink a soda you just shut off you just shut off fat burning okay for hours half a slice of bread shuts off fat burning physiologically on a cellular level the body requires no carbohydrates at all think about the Maasai the Aborigine the Inuit Indians hundreds of thousands of years very low carb eaters you take that information you try to pass it on to a family and they would say you're so. crazy because they say my doctor said <clears throat> well your doctor has no training in nutrition yeah. 4,000 hours of training to become a physician he knows nothing about diet or exercise uh -huh. plus he's got to see 30 people a day you only get to spend 10 minutes with your with your son that's right forget about it educate yourself and that's important of coaching too which Co we had another video about coaching as well big time coaching is going to be so important so, in the future and and it's important to parents to think that their kids also have the same stresses in life that they do they go through the same environmental toxins they you know diet and that kind of stuff so not just it's not just something that affects the parents even at kids at 6 8 10 12 15 years old have these same stresses and that impacts the body in specific ways exactly so you can't just think oh yeah well he's young he'll grow out of it you know you've got to start at a young age looking at him on a physiological level nice get tested and then what if he's okay he's okay good you got a baseline then you can kind of go from there exactly, you know? exactly. so that's about it hey any questions we're good. anything we're good yeah good all right so check us out on youtube subscribe to us guys and uh, check us out on the web, Scala Precision Health, the Institute of Nutritional Medicine, Cardiovascular Research. Thank you, Russ. Hey, my man. All Thank right. you.